you are a lieutenant in the military, right? Whether it's the Navy, whether it's the Air Force, you name it, right? And you have just recently received what is called TK clearance, which is above top secret, above classified. It's considered one of the more higher uh, levels, if you will. With that being said, though, You've been briefed that you have decided and you will be entering, uh, by choice, by the way, uh, but once you make this choice, you can't go back, a certain department of the military that is, you know, quote-unquote, off the books, black projects, you name it. So, once you receive your TK clearance, you go through a handful of weeks of just reading documents in a briefing room uh, of what to expect and things like this with your first upcoming interaction with them. Of course, them, you know, you assume is extraterrestrial, but you don't ask any questions because you can already feel the, the ominous energy in the room. Room, the secrecy, the whole compartmentalization, don't ask any questions type of feeling. Long story short, you are told by your superior, listen, we're going to be meeting a few of them. They're just referred to as them. They're going to be coming and they will be landing their ship on our runway or you name it, right? But then your superior says, listen, this has happened many times before. When they get off that ship, do not shoot them. Because people tend to get nervous, especially for their first time, and they react in a very scared and frightened way, and your superior says to you, very few people or soldiers in the past with this TK clearance who have had these meetings with these extraterrestrials have actually stayed calm in their first encounter. The aliens come, the ship lands, a few of them walk off, they start walking closer, you start freaking out because you realize this is not human whatsoever, and what do you do? You shoot the aliens. Your superior gives you shit and says, God damn it, why the hell did you shoot him? I just told you not to shoot him, right? Okay, so you might be thinking, Dave, what does this have to do with anything? Long story short, you turn around, you walk away, heading back to the base, you turn your head back around again, and those same aliens all of a sudden are walking off the ship again. You're like, hold on, didn't I just kill them? Didn't I just get in major shit? But at the same time, you think again, you go, whoa, first off, what just happened? And secondly, it seems like my superior didn't reprimand me or punish me for killing them. So clearly, this was just some little mistake or they're able to somehow come back to life. With that being said, I apologize for a little bit of the extra long intro, but I feel like it's very necessary to understand the concept of what we're going to be covering here and connecting the dots on with that being said i just want to say very quickly we do have a patreon it does help support the show and at the same time i would like to thank everybody so much for this uh, the support and just the amount of uh, emails messages and all that that i've i've received i will get to all of you i promise and i will start the shout outs back up again so let's jump right into it the medusa stockpiling inter-elevational memory metal for orthographic borgs and in brackets ferrocell rituals and bracket now you might be saying okay hold on what the heck is all this first off let's understand something before we under understand orthographic borgs what we first need to understand is inter-elevational memory metal so we can just say this very simply and very foundationally that the Roswell crash helped bring us, you know, many different things. The integrated circuit, if you listen to Colonel Philip Corso, but again, there are, there's speculation that there were certain metals or metallurgies, if you will, that were retrieved prior to the Roswell crash. That's not the point. The point is this. If you folks remember the episode that I spoke about, uh, that I brought up, excuse me, that I, that I did a couple months ago of Yuri Geller, the alleged, you know, um, gentleman who can control things with his mind, he ended up being called up by Warner Von Braun back in the day. And Warner Von Braun brought him to a uh, classified NASA testing facility and said, I need you to help me figure out what this metal is. And he held up a piece of metal and he said, he goes, Yuri, it, it feels like it's breathing and it's living, literally. And this is why inter-elevational memory metal is sort of the safeguard in within the, I guess you could say, the human apparatus of things. And it is the final way in which humans feel like they can maintain control. Because at this point, I'm not saying this is fact, but it is very speculative that the Orion Dracos are in fact the ones that truly run this planet. Now, before you switch away and say, oh man, he's saying things all out there and it's just like, you know, he, he thinks that he's saying it so factually and correctly. Let's take a look at this right here. This, uh, this document I'd like to analyze. This here, okay, folks, is from... A gentleman by the name of Leonid Ivashov. Now, who is Leonid Ivashov? Leonid Ivashov, one of the, and I quote, one of the best known geopolitical commentators in Russia. He is a former four-star general of the Soviet Union and Russian military and has filled high-level positions in the Russian military command. He's currently the president of the Russian Academy for the Study of Geopolitical Problems. He is... Uh, the author of several books, including his autobiography, I Am Proud to Be a Russian General, end quote. Now, before I go on, he did write a book that was called The Inverted World, The Secrets of the Past and the Enigmas of the Present. 
All right. Now, here's what's very interesting. This book cannot be found in any other language except for Russian. Nothing whatsoever. There's no translated version. There's no publisher, even independent publisher, that would accept Mr. Uh, Ivashov's book, or Ivashov's, excuse me. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the things mentioned here. And I quote, Ivashov's main thesis is the strong link of the political ruling elite and esotericism for secret ancient knowledge. Before I go on, b what that basically means is that things like, you know, the rumors that... Um, the U.S. actually went to Iraq to look for a Stargate, not just for oil and things like that, but to look for a Stargate could actually be vindicated, if you will. But let's carry on. This is kept away from the public eye and only a very few ever get a chance to witness the archival evidence to prove its existence. This is exactly what Ivashov claims is in his book. His book claims secret documents of the 1930s of the secret ministry of internal affairs later becoming the, key, uh, the KGB. Excuse me. Okay, take a look at this. Hitler's Nazi regime was interested in obtaining secret Tibetan knowledge about the existence of ancient, ancient civilizations, including a civilization hidden under the ice of Antarctica. The Nazis got what they wanted by paying millions of Deutschmarks to the high-level Soviet intelligence agent Yakov Blumkin. Blumkin was sent to Tibet by the Soviets befriending the Tibetan lamas to obtain information hidden for centuries. Based on a certain defeat at the end of World War II, the Nazis used this information to relocate their personnel and their resources to New Schwabenland in Antarctica. End quote. Anyways, long story short, let's take a look at this right here. And I quote, Ivashov provides authentic documents showing the Russian secret intelligence report to Stalin. Some months later in 1945, Stalin signs off a document commanding worldwide Soviet intelligence to search for Hitler, knowing that there was no proof, proof of his death. Anyways, long story short, this is the final document that I would like to, to analyze, the final paragraph. Take a look at this. Ivashov insists the, of the authenticity of the documents. Now, take a look at this. Russian submarines in November and December 1945 were attacked by unknown types of objects and had to turn back. Ivashov is not allowed to name the names and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, additional islands were populated in the South Pacific Ocean, near Antarctica, and things like this. End quote. So, why am I bringing all of this up? I'm bringing all of this up because the craft in which chased some of these Soviet submarines happened multiple times over. Okay, very similar to the example that I gave at the very beginning. Now, Mr. Ivashov, again, will not go into any more elaborative details. It makes perfect sense as to why he wouldn't, because he knows the limits in which he could uh, he could extend so gratuitously, gratuitously excuse me, his, uh, his, his dissemination of this information. With that being said, though, let's take a look at this right here. Orthographic projection, and this is going to bring the whole last, you know, 10 minutes full circle, so to speak. Orthographic projection, according to Wikipedia, is a means of representing three-dimensional objects in two dimensions. It is a form of a parallel projection in which all the projection lines are orthogonal to the projection plane, resulting in every plane of the scene appearing in affine transformation on the viewing surface. The observers of an orthographic projection is an oblique projection, which is a parallel projection in which the projection lines are not orthogonal to the projection plane. Long story short. Now, orthogonal is the generalization of the notion of perpendicularity to the linear algebra of bilinear forms, end quote. Now, I'm going to be straight with all of you. I don't know what half of that stuff means. I know what a decent percentage of it means, and I'm going to be totally honest because I'm not going to pretend like I'm some super smart person or, or, or something like this. With that being said... This orthographic projection is used at a much more advanced level by these extraterrestrials when encounters take place because of the hostility that we as humans present to them. So, the craft in which came at the, fir the first craft with the aliens walking off at the first time around at the story that I mentioned at the beginning, that was an orthographic projection using memory metal at the most advanced levels of, I guess you could say, a principalistic, um, uh, w what's the word, um, Entropies. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. Now, why do I say that? Because take a look at this right here. Bibliothecaplates.net. Earth grids and portals. The crystalline grid. Other dimensional worlds. Stars and planets in the galaxy. Solar system and beyond. The, and I quote, the crystalline grid keeps harmony within the earth plane and at the portals links the earth to the stars and universes to have harmony with our neighbors in space. Crystals are electromagnetic and the grid was created through their joining, put out an electromagnetic energy field around the earth that drew moisture and then life started to gradually form as we know it, end quote. Now, I'm not bringing this up because I'm talking about the origins of human life or anything like this. I'm bringing this up, particularly the crystals, because 
if we take a look at some of the, I guess we could say, um, disseminated or leaked documents from, or declassified from the Australian documents as well, there are consistent, subtle references to this sort of event occurring where these aliens seem to be resurrected, but you never see them actually being resurrected. It's almost like a certain part of a physical space is being played over, sort of like when you rewind a movie. But every single time this occurs and humans are allowed to examine or go inside their craft afterwards, they notice that there is crystalline uh, w magnetism being emitted, mag magnetism frequencies being emitted within the craft. And in some cases, there aren't. So clearly there is something there that this crystalline helps to activate all of this. Now, anyways, let's take a look at this right here. NASA.gov. Hidden portals in Earth's magnetic field. We call them X points, and I quote, or electron diffusion regions, explains plasma physicist Jack Scudder of the University of Iowa. They're places where the magnetic field of Earth connects to the man magnetic field of the sun, creating an uninterrupted path leading from our own planet to the sun's atmosphere 93 million miles away, end quote. What happens if you were to insert an orthogonal projection device or apparatus in this portal, if you, if you want to call it, or as NASA refers to it as? What would happen? Think about a very simple beam of light. All of a sudden, now it's diverted. It's split. So now, instead of one beam, you have two beams. Very, that's very basic science. Very basic, uh, you know, laser technology, principalistic foundations that have been known for a very long time now, right? So again, if we can apply that to this same sort of entropy that occurs when the in this uh, when I referenced the, my story at the beginning, when the aliens come and then you turn around, you turn back around, and all of a sudden they're coming back again. If that could be harnessed, what we would then have is a form of communication and a form of, I guess you could say, um, uh, paranormal abilities that could be used and exploited and harnessed in a positive sense. Okay, now in the upcoming members episode on Patreon, we will be analyzing some footage having to do with a leaked, alleged, uh, you know, jellyfish looking craft, if you want to call it. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because these craft are called uh, Borgs, if you want to call it. Uh, Borgs using Ferrocell rituals. So, what is a Ferrocell? Let's take a look at Ferrocell.us. We've all seen how, and I quote, how a magnet affects iron fillings and the patterns that appear when scattered over a sheet of paper with a magnet below. A ferrocell will also produce patterns from a magnetic field, but the view you see using a ferrocell is much more detailed and appears as a hologram in 3D space, not a bunch of black grains on a flat 2D sheet of paper, end quote. Isn't that very similar to the ortho, uh, to the orthographic projection that we just defined right off Wikipedia? Not like it's a conspiracy, not like it's pseudoscience, it's legitimate, it's right there. Now you might be saying, Dave, why are these Borg craft or these orthographic Borgs or the jellyfish craft so significant and so important? It's not because they look like octopuses floating in the middle of the air, uh, you know, or flying and making these maneuvers just like the traditional uh, saucer flying disc does. It's because these, for some reason, I have yet to find out why, but I will do my absolute best to find out. These jellyfish craft have the most amount of metal memory. And right now, within the State Department, the deep state, the humans within the deep state that are very skeptical about their extraterrestrial superiors, if you want to call it, they feel as though metal memory is like an extremely advanced version of, I guess, quantum computing or blockchain or something like this, where it is a form of storing memory in many different ways. Now, if you check out our Let's Get Banned episode from uh, yesterday, depending on the day you're watching this, having to do with the uh, Lockheed Martin's X-22A, it seems as though that this was utilized in Operation Desert Storm in order to uh, use certain laser particles using orthographic orthographic Borg technology from the jellyfish craft to completely destroy evidence to the point where even if you were to take the chronovisor and point it in that area, you couldn't even see what events occurred there. This is extremely advanced, I guess you could say plasmoid technology using laser beams and things like this. Now, let's take a look at the unexplainedmysteries.com. Russian general says we have been... Uh, summoning ufos for over 30 years now let's carry on let's take a look the main objective was to stop any opportunities of war of of war arising between mankind or at least russia and extraterrestrial civilizations the kgb conducted a study uh, conducted an ample study of unexplained phenomenon near vladimirovska in 1984 the location wasn't picked randomly as most documented ufo encounters took place at sites where weapons or dangerous technology were tested and i quote this is according to one of the generals that is speaking general yeramenko we can say that we learned to summon ufos in vladimirovka to do this we dramatically increased the number of military flights and movement of the equipment if the intensity on our side increased ufos appeared 
with the probability of 100%, end quote. Now, let's take a look at this right here. In the process of research, this is again from the same general, we came to the conclusion that a human was an energy and information system that receives information from outside. This is precisely why a human can manifest paranormal abilities again, end quote, tying the two in, paranormal, extraterrestrial. We could argue that the science of it is one in the same, if you want to call it. Now, let's take a look at this. Savin explain, I quote, explains how they had mastered a way to make the human brain function like a radio and contact other civilizations. He says, we wanted to make a contact with representatives of other civilizations and we did it. We had to tune energy contour of the human brain to a particular wave like a radio, but no chemicals or drugs were used on subjects during testing. And the scientists also came up with a way to tell if individuals were making progress or just hallucinating. All right. What happened next was amazing. This is according to the general folks. Six individuals were able to actually touch extraterrestrial life forms and one was even invited to visit a ship. The aliens did give away some information about the structure of their society, but left out important parts like any military details. They supposedly also left knowledge of medical procedures that could cure most diseases. Savin told journalists that the human race is so precariously evolved that they would compare us to infants. And again, this is directly from the general. He says, our civilization is too young to be of interest to them as a subject for a dialogue because we are also part of the universe we may harm ourselves and other civilizations with our foolish actions so they are looking out for us end quote now why do i bring this up i bring this up because of this right here for those that may in fact actually may not you know believe this or that you say dave i want some more evidence remember if you guys check out our live streams the examples of camden and myself saying you know when you have a pet like a cat for example and it's a kitten and they keep jumping up on the table and they're not listening and you keep taking the cat off the tables and you say to it you know no don't do it again and you try to get them to learn and understand could be with any animal right it's that same idea in this case we're the cats the aliens are the you know the, the people sitting at the table saying no don't do this Pardon my English here, but no, you're going to fuck up that if you drop an atom bomb again. Things like this, right? Now, let's take a look. at. If that wasn't enough, let's take a look at this. ibtimes.co.in, all right? International Business Times. Mainstream media website, arguably. UFO report was like a sci-fi movie containing 14 videos, but government covered it up. Anyways, let's take a look at this right here, and I quote, The Daily Star reports, There were 70 pages and 14 videos. They got to see the good stuff. There was a full classified report and 14 videos. I know several people who were in the National Security Council meeting, and the best comment I heard was, What we had was 40 minutes of science fiction movies. We were all gobsmacked. It's ridiculously slim. Everything they could redact, they did. But the committees in the White House, they saw the works, said McEwer on Spaced Out Radio, end quote. So, technically speaking, I guess this means that Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, I guess it means, look, that, they, that they've that they been briefed on a very large extent of this. Now, you might be saying, okay, Dave, why is this the case? This is the case because within the National Security Council, Lou Elizondo has sort of indirectly confirmed but non-confirmed this. There is a group called Collins Elite, separate from the Majestic 12 and the Zodiac, although some of the members may conflate between the two. Collins Elite is a, is a group within the rogue shadow government of the deep state, whatever you want to call it, that believe that these aliens are demonic, they're demons, and there's nothing good that can come of this, okay? Why do I bring that up? I bring that up because it, let's take a look at this right here. Patents.google.com, walking through walls training system. Abstract, this invention is a training system which enables a human being to acquire sufficient hyperspace energy in order to pull the body out of dimensions so that the person can walk through solid objects such as wooden doors, end quote. Take a look at when this patent was filed. 2004, but that could mean anything, right? Like this could be a theoretical thing, you name it. But take a look at the inventor, John St. Clair. If you take a look at this, uh, this individual, doesn't exist, has filed a bunch of patents for the United States Air Force, the Navy, you name it, right? With that being said, take a look at this right here. Thinkaboutitdocs.com. 1977, mass sighting of jellyfish-like UFO over Pre Petro Zavotsk. Excuse me. Now, you might be saying, Dave, why do you bring this up? And look at this. Entity type, entity description, uh, close encounter, observation of an object, September 20th, 1977. Okay, so you see this image right here. It's been pretty, it's been, uh, you know, circulated around, um, ar around the world quite extensively, especially very recently. But the reason why I bring this up is because this jellyfish craft is the same craft that we will be analyzing, or jellyfish looking craft, I, I, I should rather say. This is what we will be analyzing in the next upcoming members Patreon episode because it uses metal memory to then harness the orthographic Borgs. 
all right, to allow for this sort of plasmoid interdimensionality to work. Now, you might be saying, Dave, the hell does that mean? So if we jump back to the patent here, what we're going to see is that this is limited, this patent, to an individual, to a humanoid. I'm not going to say a human, but a humanoid. Why? Why can't this be done on, say, for example, a much larger scale, like on a planet, right? A planet with people on it. Very similar to how they're saying nowadays we are shifting into the fourth dimension. We are ascending into the fourth dimension. And again, it's no coincidence that around the same time this is coming out, NASA suddenly has discovered all these energetic portals. Now, again, portals can mean many different things. But if we take a step back and we look at the two different Russian generals that describe the way in which this whole apparatus works, and we look at the way in which ferrous cells tend to work respective to that of magnetism, certainly seems like it wouldn't be that difficult to do um to be able to make this happen right so let's take a look at this right here fox13news.com usgs magnitude 3.9 experimental explosion reported near same site of navy testing in june all right again uh, this is approximately 187 miles east northeast of flagler beach florida and quote interestingly enough off the coast of florida similar uh, allegedly where the secret space solar warden program is right so this jellyfish type of craft is being used as metal memory now the next thing becomes okay who is flying this craft who is manning the craft things like this right well let's take a look at this right here Curiosmos.com. Scientists reveal a multidimensional universe inside the human brain. They have found the human brain can create structures in up to 11 dimensions. These dimensions, however, are not seen in a classical sense. End quote. That is a very light form of drop feeding of what I just mentioned about how that general said they were just using soldiers, just using their own minds, tuning to the right energy contour. They could actually, I guess you could say teleport or be here while also interacting with aliens on their craft or on their planet. Again, similar, very similar to the concept of the orthographic Borgs or projection. It was one beam and now it's split into two, but the entropy is that of the same. You see what I'm saying here, folks? Now, again, I'm not stating this as fact. I'm stating this as taking a step back and looking and connecting the dots as we see them, right? The next thing, very quickly, if we take a look at eos.org, and I quote, tree rings show record of newly identified extreme solar activity event. Interesting. Ma mass spectroscopy of tree ring material indicates a sharp single year rise in carbon-14 concentration consistent with an extreme solar energetic particle event that occurred around 5,410 BC, end quote. You mean this lines up directly with the Hindu scriptures that have spoken about the nuclear bombs being set off in ancient history? Are, you, are they talking about that? Again, we got to look for the little details where we can find them. Now, the final thing I want to end off with that is sort of harnessing mass consciousness to allow for humans to get closer and closer to the metal memory material, that of which they just want more of. What we're going to find here is that we're going to see this article by telegraph.co.uk. The hidden excuse me sorry anyways i can't see the article at the moment but it basically talks about little things about your life that tend to bother you that they that tend to stress you out things that get you anxious that could be resolved uh with the help of modern technology and things like that again the goal here is to get you to focus in on the current modern technology so that mass consciousness could be directed towards what you would call a large virtual i guess echo chamber of thoughts and ideas and as long as it stays divided within a two-sided system the elites can play both sides against the middle. Not to mention, finally, last but not uh, last but certainly not least, Mr. Ivashov mentions in his book that a transnational elite, the same transnational elite that um, uh, Mr. Uh, Julian Assange, excuse me, mentioned, are trying to use Afghanistan to simply funnel their money and use it as a tax base of sorts. This transnational elite, according to Mr. Ivashov, are starting wars all around the world to look for esoteric knowledge in pursuit of full control and power. Sounds like something out of a movie, but this is in Mr. Ivashov's book. So again, I'm not telling you folks what to think or what not to think. What it comes down to is very simple. He's got the credentials, the military records, the, he's a doctor, scientist, very similar to, you know, the former Israeli uh, defense minister, very similar to uh, Paul Hellier former Canadian uh, defense minister, sorry, the uh, Israeli gentleman was the for former uh, space uh, minister, Either and Boyd Bushman, you name it. It's either all of these guys are going senile or they simply don't care and they're going to tell it like it is and say what they know. With that being said, folks, let me know what all you think and we'll catch you very, very soon. Cheers.